while the fight to protect women from violence is raging throughout Israel. Thousands protesting across the country on Wednesday following the Monday murders of two women, allegedly by their husbands. Naja Mansour, 35 years old, was found dead in her Kiryat Chaim apartment with signs of physical violence. A few hours later in Beersheva, police found the body of 67-year-old Rina Garbinov in her apartment after her husband allegedly beat her to death with a hammer. Now, I want to discuss this further, so joining us is Anat Nir from Ani Isha, the advocacy group behind the protests. Thank you so much for joining me on this important issue. Thank you for having me. Well, firstly, I wanted to ask you, you know, if you could explain to us, what are the red flags that a relationship might be abusive? And at what point should a woman actually be concerned? And if she is in Israel, what options does she have? So there are red flags in uh, violent relationships. There are red flags for the women themselves. You know, if you feel like you're hiding things, if your partner asks you to say different things outside and inside the relationship, uh, if you feel like uh, you're walking on eggs, if you feel like you're uh, very tense toward the meeting with your partner, uh, do you find yourself doubting your sense of judgment? Um, do you try to remind yourself what you actually love about him? Uh, do you find that you are about to be beaten and you feel like you're threatened even though there are not yet maybe violence or there is violence, physical violence as well? Did he hurt something that you like, um, an object, a pet, a kid? Did he humiliate you? Did he use humiliating words? Um, did you not go to social meetings that you wanted to go to because you felt like you had to hide something? Right, all so if they're experiencing all of these signs, where should they turn? Well, there are, of course, there's uh, all the lines for, you know, there are, there are many numbers, but you can Google the lines, but of course, in every city, you always have 118, which is a line in every city that you can call. And of course, you can also call the police and you can also address the welfare in your city. You can Google, you know, violence towards women and you can always get uh, hotlines and numbers. We have now started uh, delivering those numbers in many methods so women will have more access to the numbers. So that's uh, one thing. The other thing is for us, the public, if you hear something from the flat next to you, don't be shy. Don't feel like you're shoving your nose into business that are not your business. Just knock on the door. Make sure that uh, someone is feeling safe enough because that's how the murder in, Mitz in Mitzpah Ramon was uh, prevented by a neighbor that was uh, stubborn enough to stop the man from killing a woman there. Anat, we know that um, cases of domestic violence have increased during the coronavirus pandemic. Why is that? Well, you know, uh, people are uh, in, a, in a stressing environment. They're used to going outside to work or being in the public sphere, and now everybody's in the private sphere, in the domestic space, and it creates tensions that people have not known before. Maybe some people have less money and are more uh, tending towards pressure, and that increases by hundreds per, hundred percent the uh, uh, amount of domestic violence in Israel and also in other places in the world. But we know from the Israeli uh, uh, police that the numbers are very, very high. And they actually called us to get some uh, advice. So uh, we should know that this is a very hard time for women and for families. I wonder if you could describe to us the sort of demographic um, that is coming out to these protests. What parts of Israeli society are most affected by this issue? And which ones are coming out to the protests? Well, of course, the most affected by issues of violence are people who are more uh, uh, from uh, communities that are, that are, in general, are weaker. Uh, so we see more violence in uh, Russian, Ethiopian, Arab society. And uh, of course, that I want to say, it's important to say in the same uh, sentence, 
We see Jewish women from Ashkenazi origins, from uh, richer cities also being murdered, and also that uh, they're experiencing violence. So it's not only that uh, communities that are marginalized experiencing domestic violence, it's all over the world and all over Israel, in all societies, in all walks of life, in all professions. Women were uh, working outside of their house with careers, were Ashkenazi Jewish origins, also experience violence. It's very important to say it. But of course, that you know, um, communities that are more marginalized and marginalized groups experience more violence and, it's, and they get less justice. And that we, have, uh, that we have very little time left, but I wonder if you could just, for all the people watching that might you know, find themselves in a situation like this, what is your best piece of advice? Um, please call for help. Also, men, I want to tell men, if there's only one minute, I want to tell men, if you're experiencing some kind of trouble, if you're feeling that you say something and you regret it later, there is a hotline for men. You can call the hotline, and just so you know, 60% of the men who get self-help, they don't go into the violent circle uh, afterwards. So please uh, call for help. We are there for you. A really, really important issue, Anat Nair, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.